What is up guys, my name is The Cherno and welcome to a preview of a new series, a series where I break down and analyze each of the maps of Modern Warfare 2. Basically what I'm going to do here um, is sort of focus on the major aspects of this map and try to show you guys all the important things while making this preview video as short as possible. So sit back and enjoy the ride. Okay, so the class that I chose for this game is basically just my usual go-to class, nothing special. A red dot for Mass with Slater Hand, Stopping Power and Steady Aim, Sandy Ravage style. I've actually also got an M93 Rafika as my secondary. But this definitely isn't the best choice for a map of this size, so later on in the video I'm going to show you guys some recommended classes for this map. So as you can see, starting off this game, I'm sort of keeping to the edge of the map as I make my way to their spawn, and you'll sort of see a better view of my path in a minute. Uh, there it is. So if you follow the green arrows, you can see what was roughly my path. And notice how I'm staying away from the center, that's to avoid multiple enemies looking and shooting directly at me. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm flanking the enemy, that is, I'm sort of getting behind them and attacking them from there, but I'll talk more about flanking later on. This is a really good example of moving from cover to cover. Notice how I'm sort of staying behind this structure shown in red to make sure that I have a quick place to hide should an enemy I wasn't expecting start to hit me. When I'm convinced that this area is clear, you'll see me move up to that green forklift. Moving from cover to cover is very important and it will reduce the amount of times you die for sure. So the reason that I'm doing all this is to flank the enemy. Flanking is honestly my favourite manoeuvre and it will guarantee you to be successful. Flanking enables you to surprise the enemy. Basically think of this, you don't want a fair fight where you see the enemy and the enemy sees you and you both start firing at each other blah blah blah. You want to surprise kill the enemy without giving them a chance to react and shoot you as well. Pull off a successful flank and the enemy shouldn't even see you. Of course you also need teammates fighting at the front line with the enemy as an entire team flanking another team will be too suspicious. But since I wasn't playing in a party in this game I just went right ahead and got behind the enemy team. This is also a really good example of spawn trapping the enemy. The only flag that they have at this point is C, so as long as my teammates and I don't enter their C spawn, they will continually spawn here. People spawning at C have a tendency to run right into the warehouse to their left, so you can sort of see me guard the door here and pick up a few easy kills. Also notice how after I kill that guy, I switch up my position, that's to make sure that if the same person respawns, he doesn't know exactly where I am. Also be wary of people entering the warehouse in different ways, as you can see a guy tried to enter there, but I was ready for him and I killed him. I also decided to run out here, god knows why, honestly that was a big mistake, don't know why I did that, lost a potential AC-130, but you know, what are you going to do? Also quick thing, with this predator I can't see anyone outside, so I immediately drive that to their C spawn, and I get rewarded with kill. This guy, don't even ask, bad place to try and capture A from. Okay, so here I hear that we're losing the B flag, so I try and throw a Semtex at it, usually a good idea. Unfortunately it didn't kill anyone and we lost the flag, but I immediately try and recapture it because the score is so close and we're down one flag. I also hold down this building very well and I want to sort of show you guys a different perspective on this. Looking at the map you can see myself as the yellow arrow showing which direction I'm aiming at. This black box represents the crates behind me covering my back. Entrance into this building is possible from four locations, shown by these red arrows. My teammates are hanging out right here, so apart from the black crate covering my back I've also got my teammates. This cuts down the four entry points into just one serious threat, and that's the main entrance which I'm aiming at. Let's take a look at this view. Here you can see just how covered I am by that crate, shown in blue, and how well I'm able to cover the main entrance. And not only have I completely locked down this building, but I'm also capturing the B flag as I defend it, as the area in front of the crate is within the flag capturing range. You can see where enemies can come from by these red arrows, and notice that I'm pretty much sweet. Only thing to be wary of is grenades and semtexes flying into the building, but for that, just use blast shield, honestly, it's the perfect counter. Okay, so while you watch the rest of the footage from this game, this is me still capturing that B flag by the way. I want to sort of wrap up this short preview video by showing you my recommended classes for this map. Scrapyard is a small map, so make sure you use appropriate classes. Although I am using it for Mars, which is partly because I was on a 2 bar connection for this game, the following class setups would have been much more efficient. For your primary weapon, you'll want to use something with a fast fire rate and large damage up close, since Scrapyard is a close quarters map. The MP5K does extremely well in this role, as does the Tar-21. Between those two, the MP5K is worse at range, however fires faster and gives you greater mobility, so it's the better choice. I like putting a red dot side onto the MP5K, although the silencer or extended mags could also work well. The UMP45 simply isn't as good as the MP5K at close range, so that's why I chose the MP5K. It fires faster. 
Look at that awesome predator missile. Epic. Secondary weapon is the AR-12 with extended max. 16 shots of fully automatic shotgun shells is devastating at close range and will prove useful in really close quarters like the aircraft fuselages for example. I don't need to say much about the AA-12 other than that I prefer it to the SPAS-12 in this case. Before I move on to perks, I just want to show you guys my Harrier placement and the overall state of the game at this point. Okay, so here are the two main spawns, ours and the enemy teams, and currently we have the A and B flags and the enemy only has the C flag. Because of that, their spawn is going to default to the C spawn, shown by the Red Task Force 141 emblem, provided that none of our team has entered their spawn. As our team currently has no UAV up, and I just don't have a general sense of where the enemies are hanging, I place the Harriers right on top of their spawn, as they will be most effective there. If you don't know where the enemy is spawning, a wise move is to just place your Harriers in the center of the map. It usually works. First perk is Slater Hand. You don't need Scavenger for Scrapyard, as it's a small map and you'll probably be dying a lot, and especially before you expend your ammunition. Slater Hand also suits an aggressive playstyle, providing faster reloading and faster aiming down sights, which is what you should be doing on Scrapyard. Second perk is either Stopping Power or Danger Close. Stopping Power needs no explanation, but Danger Close is very useful for throwing those Semtexes at flags when the enemy tries to capture them. You'll get a kill every time, guaranteed, since the perk increases the damage of explosives. Danger Close is a very good and very useful perk if used properly, not one man army noob tube style. Third perk is either Steady Aim or Ninja. In fact, I have to say I prefer Steady Aim for this map. Scrapyard is a small and therefore loud map, so quietly sneaking around the map is useless. However, the MP5K fired from the hip is very effective with Steady Aim, as is the AA-12. One thing that Ninja may help you with though on this map is the ability to stay hidden from heartbeat sensors. Very useful for domination. Equipment is a Semtex grenade, immensely useful for domination on all maps. The special grenade goes to the stun grenades, they are thrown faster than flashbangs and, paired with Semtexes, are a deadly combination, as the stun will prevent the enemy from escaping your Semtex. Semtexes are also boss against riot shielders. If you see one, just stick a Semtex to a shield and you are sweet. Okay, so that's pretty much the end of this preview video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Uh, but while this AC-130 footage and the rest of this domination game sort of plays out, I just want to mention a few things. First of all, the music. The music is by Approaching Nirvana. They are amazing. Go ahead and check them out. Link is right there on the screen. They are really good. I love their music. Um, and it's free for use for any YouTube video, pretty much. So, yeah, it's amazing. Um, and their music is just so good. I just I, I listen to it like on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't just use it for videos as well because that's how good the music is. So seriously, check them out, guys. Uh, the other thing is I sort of made this video um, as an audition for TGN, I guess. Um, so TGN, if you're watching this, uh, thank you for watching. And I really hope you enjoy this because a lot of effort was put into this video. Uh, the other thing is... Um, I know this this whole concept of this series is really kind of late, I guess, because Modern Warfare 2 has been out for, what, like, two years now, almost? Um, but I do plan to do this kind of series for Modern Warfare 3, where I, where I sort of break down and analyze my gameplay on each and every one of the maps of Modern Warfare 3. So, that will be coming, so stay tuned for that. Um, and I also have a Twitter and a Facebook. Bam, there they are. Um, a lot of people ask me questions about, you know, especially with the, with the Java 3D game development sort of series. Facebook and Twitter are much better than the YouTube comments, so those there are both those links. And yeah, so I really hope you enjoyed this video because a lot of effort was put into this, honestly, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.